Hi, I'm Dr. Dean Burry, and I'm an assistant professor at the Dan School of Drama and Music at Queen's University in Kingston, Ontario. First off, I want to acknowledge that Queen's University and where I live is situated on the traditional lands of the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe people. Um, we live, we work, we play on these lands with gratitude. And as a settler, I think about that every day. I invite you all to think about where you're living, uh, the uh, Indigenous people in the regions that you're in, and reflect on your own gratitude as well. For the past term, I have had the pleasure of being the instructor for Muth 333 Music Theatre Creation Lab. Uh, it's a course which really <clears throat> invites students to, to explore every aspect of musical theatre creation, from script writing, to character creation, to lyrics, to music writing, to set and costume design, and bringing it all together. Interestingly, it's not a performance course. Uh, it's a course about writing, um, but it is also very much a course that invites people from a lot of different disciplines to come in and try different aspects. So this course has had acting majors who are learning to write music for the first time, music majors who are learning how to act for the first time, and in fact, people from around the university in different disciplines who have experience in music theater, but really have never had the opportunity to bring all those things together in a creative writing project. Um, obviously, with the pandemic, we've had challenges. In past years, we've been able to do a live production of the various musicals that were written in the course. Uh, this year, we have focused more on the solo scenes. So all of our students have written individual scenes for themselves to perform. Again, and I mentioned, it's not a performance course. So uh, th the fact that they created these videos of themselves performing these pieces is something quite wonderful in, a, in and of itself. So we have 11 musicals that we're going to premiere, world premiere for you here here today on YouTube that have been created uh, from scratch over the last uh, term at Queens. Um, I also want to mention that uh, there's going to be a lot more music theater coming from Queens in the next couple of months. From May 25th to 28th, we are running the first ever Watershed Festival, Reimagining Music Theater, which is really a festival that embraces musical theater, Broadway, opera, operetta, everything in between and everything beyond, broadening the sense. If it's creating storytelling using music and drama and dance and all of the art forms combined, then that's what we look at as music theater here at Queens. And the Watershed Festival, which is going to be an ongoing project, um, is uh, a celebration and exploration of all those things. So I invite you to check that out at www.watershedmusictheater.com. So without further ado, I give you 11 world premiere musicals from the students of Muth 333 Music Theatre Creation Lab. Another letter, huh? What is this? Some kind of sick joke? Look, you left. Okay, you made that choice. And you don't get to come back, let alone with, with uh, some stamps and a few meaningless scribbles. All right? You didn't deserve a thought in my mind yesterday. You don't deserve any of my feelings tomorrow. So I'm not going to give you the time of day today. Fine, but this had better be worth the postage. That stamp could have been money in my pocket, or food on our table. To my son, William Jr. Oh, get bent, you dewdropper. You can have the privilege of calling me your son when you actually act like my father. I hope you're doing well. I know it's been a long time since I've seen you or your mother, and whose fault is that, you numbskull? <clears throat> it's true that I left you and your mother, and that was my choice. Yeah, you know it was. For this, I am truly sorry. One day, and I pray that it be soon, I will be with you both once again. I believe that when I see it. I hope you have a wonderful birthday this year. 
with love, William Sr. You know, these letters would mean something. They actually arrived near my birthday. Every year it's the same shtick. Some letter, some nice words, some cautious optimism, and no action. You know, when I was a kid, it was just cruel. When I was a boy, it made me sad. But this year, this year, I don't really feel anything. You know what? I got a new family now. And I don't need you, Dad. I don't. So take your love, take your stamps from Madrid or Venice or wherever the hell you are and shove it. I've hunted through my memories and here's what I could find. My daddy didn't hesitate to leave us both behind. He packed up all his bags and he hid them out of sight. And one day while we slept, he left us in the night. I'm sure he sends these letters as a cautionary action to stop either my mom or me from taking legal action. But you can't hurt us anymore with letters or with love. Cause recently revenge is all that I've been thinking of. Paris and Italy, dining with nobility, you'd love for that to be your day to day. Gold and frankincense, but never at your own expense, it's always someone else who has to pay. I'll be thinking of ways that I can rise above and mom and me will reach that golden shore. Pain and sacrifice ain't the cost of paradise and I won't let you torture us no more. Traveling the world for your business. I'm certain that you made a buck or two but you left us on our own and hey, I'm glad to be alone. And I'll be sure to make it without you. Champagne and caviar, my own private dining car, just luxuries my riches will allow. Crowds will stop and stare, and I know how I'm getting there. The first step of a lifetime happens now. Yes, the first part of my journey happens now. The first step of a lifetime happens now. Look, 
Well, I never really have any fur. I have a lot on my head, but well, the rest of my body, it's pretty much bare. I always seem to feel different from you. I remember the day when my brother Scramble was born. I thought we were going to be twins since he didn't have much fur either and was pretty much bare just like me. But when his little hairs began to grow into a thick forest of fur and began to climb railings and catch butterflies, I knew there was something wrong with me. I couldn't do anything like any of you. I couldn't run fast like you. I couldn't land softly like you. I couldn't even climb up to that balcony where they serve breakfast every morning. But you were always there to bring it down to me. Though my real mother never came back, you always did. You would disappear like the speed of lightning whenever a human walks by. But when it comes to me, you would always wait for me. And I'm your only exception. The only human that you would never run away from. And Mama, listen, I would never run away from you either. I'm sorry I ran away to join that group of humans who passed by the park. But you see, there's this one girl. She had this long flowy hair and those bare skinny legs. She's really friendly. She lets me walk right beside her. And she even trips over a few rocks. <laughs> She's just like me. And you know what? She's really friendly and she wants us to all live with her. She lives in this nice cozy box. It never rains there and it's always warm and cozy. And we get those nice big fluffy clouds of bed to sleep on. We don't have to sleep on these cold tiles anymore. And every morning, breakfast comes straight to us. Mama, we don't have to climb the balcony anymore. Mama, you have to come with us. I am going to take you all to a home where we can all feel safe. Please, Mama, you've done so much for me for my whole life. Let me do something for you. Mama, listen to me, we have to go. Our homes are crushed by metal claws. Now we're prisoners by law. Our family will be torn apart. See how yours is not our place of heart. Mama, please think of leaving dear Yarnsley. Yarnsley. Phaedra walks into the kitchen where her mom is preparing dinner. She is quite anxious and is twiddling her thumbs. She has to tell her mom about the tour opportunity that she has just got with a musical theater company, which means she will not be going to university right away. Oh, hi, mom. Hi, honey. How was your... Did you attend the university open house after school? Uh, well, uh, I actually wanted to talk to you about that. What's up, sweetie? Everything okay? Athena continues to cook and be disengaged. I got a really cool opportunity, which I am so excited about. And Miss Papadopoulos says it only gets offered to students from our school once every five years. Athena turns around in excitement. Wow, that is stupendous. It is, a ma is it a major scholarship? No, it's, it's actually an opportunity for me to travel the world next year with a huge musical theater company. Absolutely not. You can go to university and continue with Greek music, good music, like I did, but you're not throwing your life away for some brainless musical. Phaedra is feeling quite defeated. And besides, you're 17. 
You barely know anything about musical theater, and you have school to focus on. Phaedra gets angry for the first time ever. Actually, Mom, I'm not going to follow your dream anymore. I don't want to study sciences or math. Ugh. And I hate Greek music more than anything in this world. Athena is stunned because she has never seen Phaedra upset and feels disrespected. Mom, in a world where I can do anything, I just want to pursue musical theater. It's my dream, my passion, and everything that I've worked for. I have always followed your directions and your dreams. I've been on every club at school that you wanted me on. I've worked in the science clubs and the math clubs for five years now, which I hate, by the way. I have straight A's in all of my classes. I'm the president of the chemistry committee. Ugh. But these are your dreams, not mine, and I'm sick and tired of following your dreams. Phaedra pauses and takes a deep breath. Your dream was to be a Greek singer and to live in a beautiful house and travel the world and be on the ocean. And because of your accident, you have envisioned me and steered me in the direction of your dreams, in your footsteps. But I'm not passing up this opportunity. I've worked so hard to meet your expectations and achieve your goals, but the reality is they're not mine. Every time I try and talk to you, you dismiss me and tell me that I'll go to university or I will perform the music you want. But the truth is that shit is so boring. Becoming a rebel with a real attitude. Oh, and every day I go to Lyra's and we practice big Broadway hits like Legally Blonde, Hairspray. Oh, I feel so incredible. When we practice together, the adrenaline and the energy that comes from these songs is everything I've worked for in my music career. Oh, and Miss Papadopoulos says I'm incredible. She said I have star talent. Truth is, Mom, I feel so trapped here. We all do. And you've never asked me what my dreams are in life, and we all do what you want, and we've always obeyed you. But for once in my life, and the first time ever, I'm gonna follow my heart, and I'm gonna follow my dreams. I try to be honest and show the real me, but all that you give me is doubt. I try to be like you, but need to be free. Why can't you figure that out? Can you trust me and please let me grow? This world seems scary alone. All I want is a yes, but instead it's no. School is all that I've ever known. How can I follow my dream when you're not on my team? You haven't seen my success, you only worry and stress. You only worry and stress. You only worry and stress. Maybe one day when I become famous, you will see my successes evolve. Then you will realize this should have been painless all along. I followed in her footsteps, it's my time to shine bright. I know I'm gonna make her proud. Maybe our dreams will align. Because how can I follow my dreams? haven't seen my success you only worry and stress so how can i follow my dream when you're not on my team you haven't seen my success you only worry and stress you only worry and stress you only worry and stress that's enough young lady you go to your room right now and when you're ready to face the fact that you will not be traveling for some stupid musical theater company, you can come down and apologize for the way you have just spoken.
Why? Why in the world did you do it? What did the I do so wrong? How did we get here? How could you stand there and say you didn't think I would care? That you were sleeping with someone else? How could you stand there and yell at me for finally standing up for myself? How could you ask me to forgive you for all the lies and the sneaking around? You thought I wouldn't find out. And you thought that if I did, I would forgive you. You <laughs> thought that I would just understand? Understand what? That you're absolutely ridiculous. That you'll never understand my feelings for you? That you'll never understand how much you mean to me? Well, <laughs> fuck you! Why did you do this, Steve? Why? I remember the first day I saw you. I was sitting in grade nine homeroom. I was so nervous about being in high school and meeting new people. But then you walked in. Our eyes met. You smiled at me. Then you walked my way. Our eyes were locked. There was no one there but you. It, it felt so calm. It was like one of those moments that only happens in movies. You sat behind me. <laughs> we exchanged sarcastic, flirty remarks for all of first semester. Then at the end of December, you decided to ask me to lunch. In January, we went on our first official date. And shortly after, you asked me to be your girlfriend. I remember the day you told me you loved me. I remember when you proposed. I remember when we took vows to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish till death do us part. In years, you'll be a memory. Maybe someone I text or something on their birthday. Maybe we'll see each other at a grocery store and we will be those people who share an awkward glare or maybe avoid having our eyes meet. Just for both of us to try to not imagine what could have been. Good morning, everyone. I hope you all had a wonderful weekend. It's great to see all of your faces. Uh, can you show me a thumbs up, middle, down about how you're feeling today? Okay, yes, okay. I'm seeing a lot of thumbs up, which is great. Um, as usual, we're going to start our day with our morning song. So everyone stand on up in your space and get ready to sing and dance along.
Good morning, it's time to sing our song. Good morning, get ready and sing along to this good morning song. Rise and shine, how are you? I am fine. Rise and shine, look out and see the sunshine. Thank you for sharing with us today. We're gonna have a good day today. Good morning, it's time to sing our song. Good morning, get ready and sing along to this good morning song. Rise and shine, jump up and touch the sky. Rise and shine, look to your friends and wave high. Wiggle your arms, your hips and your toes. Shake it all out and leave behind your lows. <laughs> oh, fuck! Fuck, that's hot! Uh, oh my god. Rise and shine, I can't do this anymore. Rise and shine, I really need some dang wine. You know what? It's time for a recess all day. <laughs> I'll see you all tomorrow. Whoa! Way to kill my train of thought! And of course, it's Brian. What's up, bud? Ugh, this guy. He's a nice guy to hang with, but such an ass when it comes to writing. Okay. So what is your plan then? Can I play with the lyrics and the melody a bit? Not that I think they're bad, but I just can't connect with them. Music note, smiley face. That's good to say, right? He can't be upset with that. No, nope. nope, erase it all. I can't say that. That's mean, right? I just want the guys to like me and not think I'm difficult. It would be so cool if we could eventually travel around Canada touring, playing our own songs that we all write. But our first tour, we'd start in Ottawa, drive up to Montreal, then hit Kingston and finish in Toronto or who knows where. You'll understand when you hear it. It make it matches the guitar well. I show you the melody when you get here. Uh, I'm really not looking forward to learning another one of your songs, dude. It's not like you're the one that has to sing it. I wonder if Thomas and Alex feel this way about writing too, or if it's just me. It would be so much fun if we wrote our songs together. 
writing our own parts. Me on vocals, Alex on drums, Brian on guitar, and Thomas on bass. Not Brian on everything. Making us bandmates, like, more like band mules. I could spend more time hanging out with Thomas, too. Band practice has always taken up listening to Brian's problems and his band manager commands. <sighs> they put our country to shame, and the hallways are lame. Who is they? What are we even talking about? Am I crazy? Is it not normal to want to be a part of the decisions in the band? I don't know if I could ever show a video of myself singing these lyrics to anyone, not even my parents. Come on, Eliza, think. How can I be proud of the music we put out there? Change the melody? Nope, Brian is already head ass about that. I'll just have to come up with my own lyrics that won't be embarrassing to sing with the melody that he wrote and convince him to like it. Otherwise, the music we are putting out there is not really a representation of me or the rest of the band. <sighs> it's just a crappy Green Day ripoff. And our band name? Against everything? What are we even against? Nothing but gibberish according to our lyrics. <sighs> okay. Let's try something. No, that's not it. Yeah, sorry. Let's meet up to talk about it. Hey mom, can you drive me to Brian's?
really excited. Tell me all about the proposal. Take a seat. Listen to this. Okay, so, obviously I knew this day was coming. I mean, so I and I have been dating for four years now. We moved in together, we went to college together, and you know more than anyone that we've been through so much together. So I knew he was gonna ask any time now. And you know me. Oh, any time he asked me to do anything even remotely romantic, I was ready. I mean, he'd ask me to go out for dinner, go on a hike, Go visit our families. Let me tell you, my nails were manicured. My hair was done. My makeup flawless. I looked good. But no, <sighs> Sawyer isn't quite that simple. You see, he had this big idea that he wanted to surprise me. He said he never surprises me. And he really wanted this moment to be a surprise. I hate surprises. So if he ever, ever had even the smallest inkling of a feeling that I saw it coming, he wouldn't do it. Wouldn't do it. One day, we're having dinner. It's late and it's dark out. I asked him to go with him to take the dog out. I said, sure. We do that all the time. And now, there's absolutely nothing romantic about taking the dog out to crap. So obviously I thought nothing of it. I mean, I threw my hair up in this messy bun and I put on my old college sweatshirt and we're out for a walk. And we're walking down Central Park and he sees this little beaten off path to the right and he asks if we can go down it. And I said, sure, we have nothing else to do. He says he's been eyeing it for a while, and he's really curious as to where it leads. Sure. So we walk down, and all of a sudden I see the most beautiful thing. In the snow, carved out are the words, will you marry me? And there's tea tree oil lights, and rose petals, and it's just beautiful. It's honestly beautiful. And I turn around and I look at Sawyer in the eyes and I say, oh my God, we're ruining someone's engagement. We have to get out of here. And then he did the most despicable thing. You see, he got down on one knee. This was my engagement. My jaw dropped. I mean, I was humiliated. I mean, look at me. Don't get the wrong idea. I mean, I love Sawyer. I love him so much. And of course, I want to marry him. And I appreciated the romantic thought. But oh my god, I couldn't have looked any worse. I had such big plans for this moment too. I mean, we were supposed to take pictures and I was going to post these pictures all over social media with a big caption that said, I said yes. I was going to hang this picture up my wedding. I was gonna put this picture on the wedding invitations for crying out loud. It was gonna go everywhere. I had these plans and they're now all ruined. Like no one's gonna see that picture ever. Ever. I look horrible. But it's okay. It's okay and I'll tell you why. Because you and me are in charge of this wedding. We get to plan it, and so that means I will make sure that nothing goes wrong. I am in control, which means everything will be perfect. You mark my word. As a young girl, I dreamt of this day, feeling like a princess in every way. It must be perfect on spare time. Tick tock, tick tock, we don't have much time. You're my bridesmaid, it's a big deal. You plan my shower and pick the meal. 
I want a good speech and a fun dance. Don't mess this up. This is my big chance. <laughs> Roses must be red. This dress is far too tight. Get this veil off my head and get it out of my sight. The cake is too small. There are not enough guests. I need more lights on the wall and you are failing my test. I've seen the shows and I bought a book. But you're teaching me how the day should look. I'm a volcano that will explode. I need your help to lessen my load. I have to remember that it's my own life. Because all that matters is becoming his wife. She said, oh. <laughs> I'm gonna miss her. 
soon as I get to the big city, I'm gonna find a friend. Not just any friend, a friend who can talk. I'm gonna ask that friend if I talk too much. She's gonna say, not at all, you talk just the right amount. Because I do, I do talk just the right amount. Yeah, I'm gonna look amazing. I'm gonna have so many friends and I'm gonna have the nicest house. You can picture it now. Front porch, blue siding, huge garden, an even bigger vegetable garden in the back. Two bedrooms, a living room, lots of counter space in my beautiful kitchen with lots of daylight, and a sewing room. Yeah. <laughs> I can't even sew. Did I? Did I just describe the farmer's house? Oh, why won't they just let me live with them? Aren't I their daughter? Don't they love me? Well, whatever. I hear the houses in the big city are even nicer than theirs. They said so themselves. They're um, tall. Yeah, with even taller windows. And um, they have bedrooms, big bedrooms, with extra bedrooms just for cows. <laughs> I haven't actually heard anyone say that, but that doesn't mean it isn't true. Oh, I hope I get there. Look, I know it's strange hanging out with you and all. I'm not completely out of it. I know I'm way too involved in this world of little pixel people. I know I need to get outside, and I know I need a life, as the kids say, but it just never seems to work out. I'm always the weird one, the one nobody wants to talk to, the one who says a thing expecting a laugh and a haha, you're so funny, Darla, but gets met with crickets, endless crickets. I've tried to fit in. I've worn the clothes, I've tried making good conversation, it's just not me. I guess. I guess I'm just not the type of person that everyone likes, that a whole lot of people want to spend time with. I don't know what he wants from me. I mean, I don't have anything to offer him. I don't have a dozen friends like some of the other people. I mean, you see it, right? You see it all the time. You follow a classmate on Instagram and they can get like a hundred likes on a selfie. And everyone showers them with praise in the comments. Then you post something and it's the crickets again. And it's, it's so stupid. Likes don't matter. Comments don't matter. This is all just nothingness on the internet. For some reason, it matters so much. It makes you feel like you're just the other guy. Somebody nobody really cares about. Because <laughs> if they did, you'd get the same attention. At least, that's how it feels. I mean... Years we went to the same schools, and now he wants to talk to me? That doesn't make sense. He must be playing some kind of strange joke. That's the good thing about pixel people, I suppose. They can't hurt you. They're safe. Sometimes they have predetermined stories, or you can make, make it up for them. You get to decide. You can be anyone you want to be. You can be a five-star celebrity. You can live in a penthouse and be a super rich CEO. You can just be yourself or whatever version of yourself you want to be. 
As I said, I know. I know it's weird. If you question me, that's fine. If you think something's wrong with me, I don't blame you. But I'm not hurting anyone, am I? I'm just doing what's best for me, okay? I've found my place. I know I'm welcome here. I feel welcome in Stardew Valley, in The Sims. In these worlds, your neighbors always want to be your friend, and they bring you a fruitcake just to show it. Maybe it's weird, but I'm just rolling with the punches here. I don't want to be alone. I don't want to keep quiet if I have something to say. I don't want to deny it, the attention it deserves. Even if they're fake, even if it's planned, it's just nice to know. Someone out there gives a damn of what it's like to be abandoned or left out of the club. What it's like to feel you never mattered much to anyone. The feeling of wondering why. The feeling of passing. Yes, I tend to dwell else stuck in my emotions Living in my own hell In here I can't escape And I feel something above average Something more than just okay Or fine Or who cares anyway Where you sit and start to wonder Wow, this has to be my best work yet. I'm really starting to put my heart and soul into my pieces. Since I was a little girl, I never really felt like I knew my purpose in life. Especially now, since my sister and her talents are so well known around the world. I feel like I need to find something different from her so I can really stand out and be my own person. Which is why every weekend at Phoenix, I've tried reading books about more topics than I can count. Somehow, I always keep coming back to painting. I feel like no matter what I do, I'll never be able to measure up to my sister. And that terrifies me. Hey dude, how's the masterpiece coming along? Honestly, I feel like I'm starting to get the hang of expressing my emotions through my painting. And this might be my best yet. What do you think? Are you kidding me? Evelyn, this is beautiful. You are so incredibly talented. I can tell you're really giving this your all. Oh, thank you. That really means a lot. I still don't understand why you won't tell anyone, though. I've never seen you put so much of yourself into something, and it makes me really sad that you won't show all the people who care about you. Maggie, you know why I don't want to show anyone. There's too much pressure. How can I be expected to show my work when this is my sister's life? She literally does this for her career and is known and loved all around the world. What happens if everyone looks at me and sees me as a wannabe? I love my family and I share everything with them, but this... It's too much pressure. Your family is going to accept you no matter what other people think about your paintings. Isn't it hard to hide this from your family? 
They care so much about you, Evelyn, and I really wish you could see that they will support you and love you no matter what. Of course it's difficult, but I don't even know if I'm all that good. I don't want to share this with them unless I'm positive that they think that I'm not a failure. I don't care to be famous like my sister. All I want is to have my own thing and to not feel pressured to measure up to her just because she started painting before me. I know. It must be hard. Wait a minute. I have the best idea, but you're going to have to trust me on this one. I have a great big plan, please trust me if you can. I've heard there is this contest, you should enter and show your best. If the judges like your art, you'll be able to show your whole heart. Sign up, trust me, you'll see. You can finally be who you want to be. Maggie, didn't you hear what I just told you? It's so much more complicated than that. You have to understand There's much more to the story I told you beforehand That's my sister's territory I want them to know the whole me, so I wouldn't need to hide. But the judges might not agree, crushing the passion I have inside. I understand your worries, but what you don't want is fame. If you use a fake name, there's no chance you'll feel shame. Please do this, Evelyn, I know you can do it. I want you to be happy and I know you'll be a hit. What you're seeing is true, so I'll make my debut. If you're right about this, I can finally live in bliss. Are you sure this is a good idea? What if I get the results back and they're awful? What if I never want to touch a paintbrush again? Trust me, this is going to change everything. My dearest Carlotta, your ballet is most complete, but as we near its ending, an unease notion consumes me, for I fear our closeness will too fade like the sylph in the night. If the world is a garden, you are my harvest queen, a white lily, my restoring maiden, rosemary, my faithful darling, a daisy, my innocent love. I must plant you in my soil and tend to you always. Oh, to have a lover as attached as this, if his craft were not reason to consider him romantic, surely his sentiments concur. His feelings so beautiful, so whimsical, so passionate. I want your hand. And from our exchanges, surely you desire mine. I promise a foundation more nourishing than any, more enriched than prose. I understand that you are more than acquainted, and yet I know of no one else who writes with the passion as you do me. For in your strokes of ink, I am inspired with fantastic elation. Surely you feel as you write, and so I beg of you, do not leave my garden unplanted or else send me Myrtle to plant there, for my life and love ends with you. Your dearest, Mateo.
dearest, my most gentle friend, I regret to say this is true. Despite all the flowering feelings I wrote, in truth I have never loved you. Indeed I have penned many letters of love that can find a lost soul, and sent them to poets and playwrights alike to gift me in turn a great role. oh my darling, my misguided bow, I write you with eyes drowned in shame, for unlike the others, your loved notes revealed to you this was never Just wanted my virtue and thrills of a loveless affair. But you only wrote me with care and respect. Now guilt is the cross I must All my letters have granted me glee The prettiest roles were danced only by me So frilly, so charming, and whimsical too The very same role that I wanted from you But now you've gone on keen to offer your hand Perhaps then exploiting your heart is still grand Delaying to tell you my promise was fake Then surely your heart like the daylight would break And using your sorrows as all poets do You'd write me a part that's so tragic, so new That no one has ever yet seen on the stage and all I must do is rewrite this page. Take, oh my darling, my heartbroken pawn, I will play this promise of love. For later when I choose to tell you the truth, you'll write me the role I dream of. Your broken dreams will bring me stardom. As long as I keep up my ruse, I'll write that I love you and sign that I'm yours. Now you, dear Teo, are my muse. Come on! Pick up the phone! You guys always sleep your phones on mute and now is not the time to do that. You need to answer me. It's all over the news. All over social media. People are posting that they're safe and you're not one of those people. And you need to be one of those people because if not, I... I don't know what to do. Hi, you've reached Christopher Ramirez. I can't get to the phone right now, but if you leave me a message, I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you. Dad! I need to know that you and Mom and Sonny are safe. I was just finishing some homework and I heard this really loud and terrifying noise. My ears are still ringing and when I turned the television on, I saw images of people covered in white and, and buildings collapsed. It's scary, Dad. Please pick up the phone and call me. Tell me that you're okay. Tell me that you 
I don't know, managed to leave just in time or that you took a detour. Tell me that you weren't in the city just 10 minutes ago and that you didn't just live your last moments. No, no, Luciana, stop. They're fine. Their phones just died and they're probably on their way home right now. Because this was never meant to happen to my family. So, um, calm down, they're fine. You've reached Dalia Kristova. I cannot answer the phone right now, but leave a message and I will call you back. Thank you. Hi, Mom. Uh, your phone is probably dead and that's um, probably why you're not picking up right now. I'm just calling because I need to know that you and Dad and Sunny are okay and I wanted to tell you that I'm really scared. I'm really scared. I'm home alone and you're not here. And I know I'm 17 and like, I always tell you that I'm almost an adult, but I need you here right now. I don't wanna believe that you guys are gone. I wanna believe that you're okay and you're gonna, walk through the front door and run up to me and give me a hug and you'll tell me that you love me and then dad will make some joke about how we shouldn't skip church tomorrow because it's thanks to him that you're still here so i'm just waiting for you to get home please get home soon I love you, Mom. You've reached the coolest guy in town. I'd say more like the weirdest dork in town. Luciana, you ruined my voicemail. <laughs> it's fine. You just gotta remind them to leave a message. Sorry, that was my big sister. <laughs> leave a message. At hey, buddy. Uh, I know you must be scared right now, but everything's gonna be fine. Okay, soon you'll be home and I'll give you a big hug, and we can watch whatever show you want. Even if it's anime, you don't need to worry because I'm right there with you. And I miss you a lot. And, and I love you. And I'll see you soon, buddy. People are dying, like the reporter said, people are dying. What does it feel like? Is it painful when you leave your family? I can only think about your smiles fading, your eyes losing light and not holding you tight. My family's in danger. On the screen there I can see My family's in danger What if you're lying on the ground Your eyes up to the sky And not knowing why It's time Hola, you've reached Dalia Cristova. I cannot answer the phone right Maybe now Maybe you'll I'm never hear you. this But the last time 
never saw you I didn't tell you I love you and I should have Maybe you'll never hear this But the house has never felt this cold And your species will begin to mold Because you may never come back home And I miss your smile, I miss your hands When you'd scold me And I didn't understand that you'd be gone someday Be left with your voice on I'd be holding this phone in this house alone But it feels nothing like you It feels nothing like you Maybe you'll never hear this But I'm really grateful for you I'll persevere Cause I grew as your daughter Maybe you'll never hear this And I'll never get to hear your reply But if there's even a small chance I'll say I love you